Hi friends, this is Leela. Welcome to my channel Leela Web Dev. In this video, we will learn about how to debug the HTML. So up to now, in the previous video, we have seen how to structure the HTML, how to structure the website content using the HTML layout elements. We have seen it. Now, for example, let's say that so HTML is a, a, a Renicast. It is an HTML language. So while writing while writing the coding in the language so it's common we will encounter the errors so if we encounter any error how to debug the html let's try to see in this video writing html is fine but what if something goes wrong and you can't work out where the error in the code is so this is the thing what is right so html so when you are writing html it's fine we are writing but if anything something goes wrong means so what you can do so you can't work out until that error is solved so how can we find that one so where is the error so where if, uh, so where the error is there if you found out that error only you can write you can write the code otherwise you can't write it html is not as complicated to understand as javascript html is not compiled into a different form before the browser parses it and shows the result so compared to the javascript language or any other programming language html is not that much of complicated and also another thing what you need to understand is HTML is also not compiled into a different form. For example, let's say that .NET will be compiled into another form. Java will be compiled. So all the all the programming languages. So some of the programming languages will be compiled and it will be yeah and it will be uh, so converted into another form. So here, whereas comp uh, whereas we when we come to the HTML, HTML is not compiled into a different form before the browser parses it and shows the result. Actually, it is interpreted not compiled. So now HTML's element syntax is arguably a lot easier to understand. So when compared to other programming languages, HTML element syntax is very much easier to understand than a real programming language like JavaScript or Python. So it's true. So we have we need to know only the HTML elements like header, heading elements and paragraph element, div elements and these all semantic elements we need to know. So these are a lot more easier than the other programming languages. The way that browsers parses HTML is a lot more permissive than how programming languages are run, which is both good and a bad thing. So the browsers parse the HTML in a different manner that is permissive manner. So let's try to see what is this permissive manner. So then how program programming, whereas the programming languages doesn't run this, uh, uh, doesn't run as permissive, but whereas the HTML in the browser run in a permissive manner. So we uh, so running the HTML in a browser permissive manner means has the both good and the bad things. Let's try to see. Now, so what do you mean by permissive? Well, generally, when you do something wrong in the code, there are two main types of errors that you will come across. So this is the common thing. So now let's try to see what is a permissive thing. Generally, when you are when you have when when there is any wrong in the code, so normally you will be having two types of error you will come across. One is a syntax error and another one is a logical error. Let's try to see what is a syntax error. Syntax error means these are spelling or punctuation errors in your code that actually cause the program not to run. Like the Rust error shown above, these are usually easy to fix as long as you are familiar with the language syntax and know what the error messages mean. So normally when you take any other programming language like JavaScript, Python, any other, th uh, any other thing, so you will be having a spelling and punctuation errors mistake. So for example, any spell, any semicolon mistake or any braces or anything, if you miss it, so it will not, the program will not allow us to run. So these are normally usually easy to fix as long as you are familiar with the programming syntax, uh, that pro, uh, that especially programming language syntax and uh, what is the error message uh, that has been given. So if you are familiar with those things, means it is very easy to solve these syntax errors. So what is this logical errors then? These are errors where the syntax is actually correct, but the code is not what you intended to be. So now you have written a logic in a such a way that uh, everything is correct. There are no syntax errors or anything. The programming language syntax and whatever you have written is everything correct. But the logic what you have written is not working exactly what you are expecting. So those, those things are called as a logical error, but the code is not what you intended to be. Meaning that the program is program is running incorrectly. These are often harder to fix than syntax errors as there isn't any error message to direct you to the surface of the error. 
So these type of logical errors are uh, generally harder to fix. Why? Because it will not show you any errors, but the expected output you will not get. So you need to check often the logic. So where the logic is not working correctly, you need to see the entire code. So oftenly, so normally these are somewhat harder to fix. So these are the generally two types of errors that we'll encounter normally in the programming languages. So now let's try to see. Let's coming to the now coming to the HTML thing. HTML itself doesn't suffer from the syntax errors because browser parses it permissively, meaning that the page still displays even there are syntax errors. Now in any other programming language like JavaScript or anything, if there is any syntax error or anything is there means the JavaScript program will not run or the Python or uh, any program will not run. Whereas the HTML, if you have any syntax errors or anything, still the program, so still the browser will try to show the output permissively. That means it will allow, it will, it will allow, the browser will allow the HTML to display the data. So it will still display the data if there is any syntax errors also. Browsers have built-in rules to state how to interpret inter incorrectly written markup. So for example, let's say that the markup, the elements you have misspelled it wrong, wrongly or you have forgot to close the tags and everything if you try to do is, the browsers has a built-in rule. So they will have their own rules to state how to interpret incorrectly written markup. So how to correct those incorrectly written markup. So browser has a built-in rules. So you will get something running. So for that reason, you will get something output running even if it is not what you expected. So the output what you are getting is not expected thing also, but you will get some output. This of course can still be a problem. So this is how we'll be checking this one. Let's try to see the practical example, how we can find the debugging thing and all those things. Let's try to see here. I am creating a file debug HTML. I am creating a new debug HTML dot HTML file. Okay. And here I will create the HTML snippet. Now here, let's say that I'm having an H3. Okay. This is the first heading. Let's assume. Okay. Now afterwards I will have a P element. So this is the paragraph. Let's assume. Okay. Now instead of having the closing element, I have removed the closing P. So now I will try to create a UL element. And in this one, I will try to have an LI. So this is the, this is the, so here, this is the, this is the first li element. I am trying to write it like this. Now I will not close this li element. Now here I will try to give, I will try to write another li and this is the second element. Let's assume. Okay. Now here I will try to open the strong and I will not close the strong element. And here also I will not close the LA element. So everything is syntax errors. So I am not properly doing the markup thing. So this is the third element. Okay. So now what is the pro what is the code I have written? Here we are first element we are having an H3 heading element of the level 3 H3. And this one has been closed and uh, opened and closed properly. Now again so the second one we are having a paragraph element. Here paragraph element, the P element is open, but we we have we don't have a closing element. So this is syntactically wrong. So every closing, every opening tag should have a closing tag, but I am not, but I am not writing the closing tag. Now here we are having an UL element, unordered list, and we have a closing uh, UL also. Here I am opening the first list item li without closing it. Inside this li, I am having a strong without closing it. Now here also the three li's are there, which, which doesn't have any closing tags. Now let's try to see the output, whether the browser shows the output or not. Let's try to see it. Now, if I try to open this debug element in the live server or otherwise in the browser. Now, if you try to see here the output, the browser is trying to see, uh, trying to show somewhat output for us. But what the output it is showing is not the up to our expected thing, but it is somehow showing some output to us. Let's try to debug this one. So how the browser is able to show it. So why? Because for every opening, we should have a closing tag, right? So how the browser managed to close the tags? Let's try to see it. Now here we are having a body tag. Let's open this body tag. Here H3 is there. So which has opening and closing tag that is already given by us in the code. So this does not create any problem. Let's go to the second one paragraph element. Now the browser is able to assume. Now here in this paragraph element, in our code actually we haven't closed the paragraph element. So there is only opening tag is there, but there is no 
closing tag. Now here the browser what it has assumed is so the opening tag is there at the end of this text. So it needs to be uh, so it is thinking that it needs to be closed. So for that reason, it has automatic the browser has automatically uh, added the closing tag p tag. Now let's come to the ul element. Whereas when it comes to the ul element, see all the li elements has been added at the end of this text. Okay, but when it comes to the strong element, so this one is little bit different. Why? Because so now the browser cannot able to understand that where to close this strong thing. So where the user wants to close the strong thing because of that reason. So what it has did is every for every end of the text. So from where the strong is adding, it is trying to add the ending tag. Ending ending tag. For example, let's say that here I have added strong. So like like this here I have added the strong. So there is no close tag. So it will go to the up to the end of the browser. So if you try to see here, strong for the first text has been closed, opened and closed. And again, li what it is trying to do. Again, in this li also it has opened and it has closed it and end of the text. And for this li also again it has opened and it has closed it. And also at the down also some of the HTML elements are, are there which has been added by the uh, live server. So this is the browser code injected by the live server. So this is extension has injected. And for this one also strong has been added. Why? Because the browser cannot able to justify that where to where to close actually the strong element. So without knowing that one, what it has did is so for every text it has added the strong, strong element to this one, so which is wrong. So now this is how the browser manages to add automatically the closing elements. So now how can we find? So for example, let's say that the browser is perfectly it is showing everything, but how can we find that where actually the problem went on? Here it is normally the code is able to we we can able to justify, but we have some tools like HTML validator. So if you try to search in Google or anywhere, HTML validator. So you'll be having a w3 HTML validator dot org. In this one, you can directly provide the URL, or otherwise you can directly uh, upload the file HTML file, or otherwise you can directly give the HTML markup here. So now if I try to copy this one and paste it, and here I will try to paste it. So now if I try to check the output, let's try to check the output. So here it is trying to check, and it is telling that so here error in the line 14, column 17, li has been opened, but it is but but there are open elements. So li has been added, but these are all open elements. There are no closed elements saying, and here the strong element is also unclosed. It is saying so end tag li there are also open elements. It is saying ul is being seen, but there are open elements. In the ul it is trying to say that so ul element is there inside that ul element. There are some open elements which are not closed. So end tag for body is seen. There are unclosed elements. So in the same scenario, it is trying to say that in the body, the children are there. There are having some children elements which are unclosed. So like this, in the HTML validator, you will be able to find. I uh, the this this what I can say. This HTML checker will be able to give you some of the errors where where the actual error has been occurred. So this is one way of uh, what I can say is so providing as a suggestions or something like that to in order to debug the HTML where the actual syntax errors are there. So this is how we will be debugging the HTML. Normally, the HTML is a permissive language, so whatever may be the text you are writing and whatever may be the syntax errors or anything, the browser somewhat it will try to adjust those errors and it will try to show the output. So because of that reason, we will be unable to debug sometimes the HTML, but you can have that HTML validator and you can see where the actual elements are unclosed and all those things. We can be able to check it. So this is how we will be debugging the HTML in our web page. Hope you understood about this one debugging HTML. If you have any doubts or any suggestions, please post the comments below to this video. And if you like this video, please do support me by subscribing to my channel. Thank you.